Hey, bye, how you? Welcome to episode 145 of Build Your House Yourself University. I'm your host and fellow student, Michelle Nelson, and together we'll learn the basics of home design and construction and demystify the building process so we can better understand our options and build quality dream homes with or without a general contractor. This week, we'll talk in more detail about a rain screen, which is a moisture control measure that can be used in new construction. I briefly introduced you to rain screens in episode 134 called Learn to Control One of Your Home's Biggest Enemies, Moisture. But in this week's mini lesson, we'll have a more in-depth discussion of rain screens and talk about when they're recommended. But before we get to that, let's go over a pro term. This week's pro term is flashing. Flashing is a thin layer of waterproof material that keeps water from getting into places it doesn't belong. Flashing material is placed at openings, intersections, and crevices in the home's building envelope, places like roof valleys, pipe openings, and around windows and doors. Flashing is installed to prevent the passage of water into the structure of the home. Take a look at the show notes to see some examples of flashing. All right, let's move into our mini lesson. A rain screen is not a tangible screen at all. Instead, it's a space, an air gap between the exterior siding and the water-resistant barrier. Water-resistant barriers such as house wrap, the zip system, or asphalt felt. Remember that house wrap is placed directly on the structural OSB or plywood sheathing to protect the sheathing from water damage. And the zip system is a two-in-one product. It's OSB that already has the water-resistant barrier attached to it. The rain screen works along with the water-resistant barrier to protect homes from water damage. When wind-driven rain and other water and moisture get behind your brick, stone, stucco, or fiber cement siding, the rain screen provides a drainage and ventilation space. It's a space that lets any water and moisture that gets behind the exterior cladding drip down or evaporate. The rain screen is added protection from wall rot. Creating the rain screen with vertical furring strips is one of the most common ways to establish a gap between the exterior siding and the water-resistant barrier and sheathing. Okay, pop quiz. Do you remember what furring strips are? We talked about furring way back in episode 15 called Size Matters, But So Does Climate, Building a House for a Hot or Cold Climate. Well, furring strips are thin strips of wood, metal, plastic, or other material that are fastened to a wall or other structure. Exterior siding or wall panels, can be attached to furring strips. Furring is used for several reasons. Number one, to make an uneven surface level. Number two, to make space for insulation. Number three, to make a wall look thicker. Or number four, to form an air space between one surface and another to prevent dampness. In other words, to form a rain screen. Just a couple of decades ago, very few residential builders even knew what a rain screen was, but it's not unusual for today's well-informed builders to add a rain screen behind exterior siding. And to be clear, when I say siding, I don't just mean fiber cement siding like hardy board. I mean most exterior siding, including brick, stucco, and stone. Vinyl siding usually doesn't need a rain screen added. More about that in a minute. A well-designed rain screen system needs four things, and a fifth one is optional. Number one, a water-resistant barrier to keep water away from the OSB or plywood sheathing. Number two, an air gap between the water-resistant barrier-covered sheathing and the back of the exterior siding. Number three, flashings at penetrations and intersections. And number four, weep holes at the bottom of the wall, so water can drain out. An optional fifth element can also be added to create a rain screen. That fifth element, again, which is optional, is ventilation openings at the top of the wall. 
Weep holes at the bottom of the wall are essential, but ventilation openings at the top of the wall are not necessary to control moisture. If, however, there are ventilation openings at the top of the rain screen gap, the rain screen has additional exposure to moving air, and that will provide even greater ventilation and theoretically accelerated evaporation of any unwanted moisture. So, the reason you might want a rain screen for your new house is to help manage moisture and protect your house from water damage. A rain screen helps to keep the sheathing and the back of the exterior siding dry when they get soaked with rain. The rain screen gap also allows moisture to evaporate. By letting liquid water escape, by dripping down through the gap and weep holes, and letting moisture vapor escape by evaporating, a rain screen provides an escape route for water and moisture and limits potential water damage, such as rot and mold. Now, how do you decide whether your house needs a rain screen? Does every house need a rain screen? There are several factors to consider when deciding whether to have a rain screen installed. First and foremost is the amount of rain your region typically gets. In some regions, rainy and coastal areas, for example, rain screen installations are required by local building codes. The more rain your climate gets, the more helpful a rain screen will be. Some experts recommend rain screen installations for areas with an average annual rainfall of more than 60 inches. In areas with rainfall in the range of 20 to 60 inches per year, a rain screen may not be essential, but it's still a good idea. You can use Google to find out how much rainfall your region gets. Here are some other circumstances that may make a rain screen worth the investment. Number one, tall walls. If your house will have two or three story walls and a roof, With little overhang, your house is more vulnerable to wind-driven rain, and a rain screen is recommended. For short, one-story walls that are protected by wide roof overhangs or a covered porch, a rain screen is probably not necessary. Number two, OSB sheathing. Since OSB is more susceptible to water damage than plywood sheathing, some experts recommend a rain screen for houses built with OSB. Number three, if your walls are made of structural insulated panels or SIPs, or if your OSB wall sheathing has closed cell spray foam insulation on the interior, experts say it's essential to include a rain screen because the insulation won't allow the OSB in those walls to dry to the interior. Number four, brick. Brick veneer installations always require a rain screen gap. And number five, stucco. Stucco siding in humid or rainy climates would also benefit from a rain screen. And what about vinyl siding? Vinyl siding usually does not require a rain screen. That's because vinyl siding already has an air gap behind it, unless it's installed on the top of rigid foam insulation. If vinyl siding is installed over rigid foam insulation that's more than two inches thick, a rain screen should be added. Whether a rain screen is specifically recommended or not, a rain screen gap is always beneficial because of its ability to control moisture. The only drawbacks to rain screen walls are the extra time, effort, and money associated with their installation. Now, a rain screen gap doesn't have to be very big. Researchers have learned that even a one sixteenth of an inch gap can help control moisture. But gaps measuring one fourth of an inch to three fourths of an inch are better. Some experts worry that puckers in the house wrap or waviness in the sheathing can narrow a gap that starts off as one fourth of an inch. So to be cautious, A deeper gap measuring three-eighths of an inch, a half an inch, or three-quarters of an inch are most often recommended. Again, most often recommended are three-eighths of an inch, a half an inch, or three-quarters of an inch. A three-eighths of an inch gap is commonly used since it's wide enough for adequate drainage and ventilation. 
even if some puckering does occur with the house wrap. Wetter climates tend to benefit from deeper rain screen gaps, up to three quarters of an inch. Deeper gaps allow greater ventilation and faster drying, but deeper gaps also make it more difficult for subs to install flashing and exterior trim. So only use those deep rain screen gaps if you live in a really rainy climate. There are three ways to create a rain screen gap. Number one, with furring strips, usually attached vertically over wall studs. Number two, with three-dimensional plastic mesh or plastic mat products. Or number three, with bumpy or wrinkled house wrap. Bumpy or wrinkled house wrap may be less effective than furring strips or plastic mesh or plastic mat options. That's because those bumps and wrinkles are not very deep and they don't provide much of a gap. Some bumpy house wraps have wrinkles that are less than 20 thousandths of an inch deep. Many experts wonder whether those tiny gaps would have any effect. Three-dimensional plastic mesh or plastic mat products are good options, but they can be expensive. Good old school furring strips may give you the biggest bang for your buck, but do some price comparisons before you decide on which rain screen option is best for you. If you do decide that a rain screen is right for your house, make sure you talk to your contractor about also installing an insect screen at the gaps at the bottom and top of your walls. That insect screen will keep critters from using your rain screen space as their home. Finally, let's briefly talk about cost. Of course, every house is different, and rain screen prices will vary depending on the size of the house and the materials used. But many siding contractors say that a rain screen will add an extra 30% to the cost of a siding project. So not 30% over the cost of your house, but an extra 30% to the cost of your siding. So that's rain screens. Before we go, let's do a couple of quiz questions. Question number one, true or false? Rain screens are recommended and sometimes required by code in regions that get more than 60 inches of annual rain. That is true. If you live in an area that gets more than 60 inches of rain per year, you should strongly consider a rain screen, even if it's not required by code. If your region gets 20 to 60 inches of rain per year, a rain screen is not a necessity, but it's still a good idea. Number two, true or false? A three-eighths of an inch rain screen gap is commonly used since it's wide enough for adequate drainage and ventilation, even if puckering in the house wrap narrows the gap in some places. That is true. Wetter regions may require deeper gaps, typically up to three-fourths of an inch. Well, that's all I have for you this week. I hope you learned as much as I did, and I hope you'll join me again next time for the next episode of Build Your House Yourself University. Bye, hi, you. Please remember that the purpose of this podcast is simply to educate and inform. It's not a substitute for professional advice. The information that you hear is based only on the opinions, research, and experiences of my guests and myself. That information might be incomplete, it's subject to change, and it may not apply to your project. In addition, building codes and requirements vary from region to region, so always consult a professional about specific recommendations for your home.